The other day, my wife, Stephanie, told me that she wanted to throw away one of my T-shirts because it has a hole in it. I'm like, you want to show throw this T-shirt away? I mean, I've been wearing this thing for like 10 years. It's one of my favorites. I got it at Gatlinburg, Tennessee, when we took a youth group to a Christian event called Resurrection. And some of the kids in our youth group gave their lives to Christ at that event. So it's special to me. Um, the other reason it's special is uh, we met a couple when Steph and I were at an Aldersgate conference, uh, Bruce and Melanie. And so Bruce and I start talking some tech stuff, and it turns out that one of his ministries is tech support for some of the events around Gatlinburg, such as Resurrection. <laughs> and so it turns out he was actually working at the same Resurrection that we had a group of kids at. So he says, hey, if y'all are ever in Gatlinburg, look us up and we'll get you some tickets to Dollywood. And so <laughs> one summer, Stephanie, Rachel, and I, we get the opportunity to go to Gatlinburg and, and we want to go to Dollywood. It's an amusement park near Gatlinburg. Some of you have probably been there, but to get into Dollywood, you need tickets, and we didn't have any. So um, I gave Bruce a call. He said, sure, come on over. We'll get you some tickets to Dollywood. Now, it's not because of anything we'd ever done for them or really spent much time with them, just a gift out of the goodness of their heart because we'd met them at a conference. And all I had to do, to do was to go pick those tickets up. Now, it crossed my mind that maybe I shouldn't pick up those tickets. I mean, I don't deserve them. or Maybe I should offer to pay for them. And th no, nah, that didn't really seem right either. I, I struggled with what to do, but finally I swallowed my pride and I just went and picked up the tickets and said, thank you. And I'm so glad I did. We had lots of fun at Dollywood, thanks to Bruce and his graciousness. You know, we'd been to lots of amusement parks, but it was like this one was created just for us. You know, the rides and the shows and the food. We, we loved it all. And I still love that T-shirt. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I, I want to share with you a scripture from uh, the letter the of first john chapter 4 verses 7 to 12 hear these words dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god everyone who loves has been born of god and knows god whoever does not love does not know god because god is love this is how god showed his love among us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. May God bless the reading of his word. You know, that's an amazing scripture. Uh, in, and in that letter, it seems like it all comes together. It, it's like a description of what the, the Bible is about the plan is all along this love of god uh is is something that god had in mind from the very beginning it means it all starts with god creating everything in the world the stars the universe the animals the birds the plants even humans and in every part of creation god said it was good and we were reminded at the beginning of the Gospel of John that it was Jesus through whom all this was created, that Jesus was there at the very beginning of creation. Adam and Eve were in the garden, and, and which is kind of like an amusement park, right? Well, not really, but way better. It was created specifically for their enjoyment. You know, the garden, the plants, the trees, the animals, the universe, the stars, everything in the world was created for their enjoyment. There was just one thing, don't eat from that one tree. Stay away from that one tree. Everything else you can enjoy. And you know how this turns out. That's precisely the tree that they couldn't seem to stay away from. And they eat from that tree and they get kicked out of the garden and they lose their ticket. They can't go back in. 
it, it's like the prodigal son story that we've been talking about, how the younger son lives with his father and everything the father has is his. He can enjoy all of it, but he wants more. He wants his father to give him his share of the inheritance so he can try something else. Eat from the tree of life. Experience what life has to offer with money and pleasure and power. But none of that really satisfies. And at the end of squandering all his father's money, he wants to go back. But he can't because he's done all these selfish things and he doesn't think the father will take him back. He thinks he's lost his ticket. But isn't that what Jesus came to do? Isn't that what the story of the Bible is all about? That God really wants a relationship with us. That this wonderful world was created with us in mind to be in a loving relationship with God. But we break the relationship by our selfishness, our desire to do what we want rather than stay in this loving relationship with God. And so we find ourselves outside the park, maybe wanting to go back in, but feeling like we don't really deserve to enjoy this wonderful creation that God made just for us because we break the relationship. But Jesus wants to give us a ticket. In fact, that was his plan all along. Jesus knew we couldn't do it on our own. Left to our own thoughts and desires, we break the relationship and we're left outside the park. So Jesus pays for our ticket. Not because of anything we do or because we're such good friends or because we deserve it in any way. It's just a gift of God's love for us. Jesus pays the price for our sins and offers us a ticket to paradise, to live in God's love now and forever. And all we have to do is say yes. We have to pick up the ticket. We have to accept God's offer and receive Christ. <laughs> it's called salvation or conversion or being born again, and it can happen in an instant, but take a lifetime to fully experience. You know, I was raised in the church. Uh, Asbury United Methodist Church in Beelington, West Virginia. It's the earliest church I can remember. And then my childhood church is First Church uh, across the street from us here at Fairmont Avenue. It's now warmly referred to as the CVS Church because there's a CVS pharma pharmacy there. But growing up in church, I learned how to pray. I learned the Lord's Prayer. I took communion. I went to Sunday school and vacation Bible school and all kinds of fun events with the church. I even went through confirmation, the class you take uh, for those who were baptized as an infant so that they can take on the promises and the, the covenant of baptism when they're old enough. But somehow going through all of that, I still did not accept my ticket. For me, Jesus was kind of a socially convenient companion. You know, it was nice to have Jesus around sometimes, but I didn't want Jesus around all the time. <laughs> I had some places I wanted to go and some people I wanted to see and some things I wanted to do without Jesus. So as I've shared uh, with some of you before, as a young man, I joined the Air Force and, and I enjoyed going to chapel when it was convenient and, and singing Christian songs with other people when it was fun but I also encountered illegal drugs and I was tempted and trapped by illegal drugs, which also means I had to lie about a lot of stuff. And so when the Air Force discovered I was taking illegal drugs, they almost put me in prison. My roommate ended up in Fort Leavenworth. But this was the first time I realized I knew I'd lost my ticket. My chance to be right with God, my Friendship with Jesus was shattered. My right relationship with God was wrong. And God knew and the whole world knew what I did when I thought Jesus wasn't around, even though he was there with me all the time. And I'll be honest, I didn't even want to ask God for help. I didn't want to face the God I knew. I was too proud and too ashamed and too self-absorbed. But just like the prodigal son we were talking about, who was feeding pigs and he longed to eat the pig slop, he was feeding the pigs. I finally came to my senses. I, I needed God's help and everything I had tried to do on my own just made things work. So I asked God to forgive me. 
I asked for a ticket and I knew I didn't deserve it, but Jesus gave it to me anyway. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for me and my sins and for you and your sins. You see, that's what Jesus does. Jesus shows us what this love from God is really all about. It's unconditional love, not because we deserve it or have done anything to earn it, but it's God's grace freely given to you and me. Jesus shows us what that love looks like, because in order to give us that ticket, Jesus has to pay the price for our sins, and God's love through Jesus looks like Jesus dying on the cross, giving his life for you and me so we can be made right with God. And brothers and sisters, when I experienced that kind of unconditional love, it was a life changer. And I wanted to share that kind of love with everyone. God's unconditional love, that's the kind of love we are called to share with others. But this scripture today is kind of like a test for our soul. It, it says, whoever does not love, does not love God. And, and that's the question, do I love? Do I love with God's unconditional love? Later in John's letter, he is more specific. He says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. And I knew about lying. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And so I find myself in this dilemma. Having experienced this amazing, unconditional love of God, and yet in me arises hate for my brother and sister, for people who abuse people I love, for, for uh, others who are innocent. This feeling of hatred arises in me for people who manipulate others or manipulate me. Sometimes it's the person in the car in front of me who cuts me off as I'm going where I'm, I want to go. <laughs> I hate and that unconditional love for brother and sister is broken, and my relationship with God is broken, so I need to come and ask for another ticket, ask for forgiveness, and experience once again the unconditional love of God. You see, today we will have communion with the whole world, and, and we begin by asking God for forgiveness to receive once again this love that is from God. And as we receive this love that we don't deserve, we're invited to give this love to sisters and brothers around the world, not because they deserve it or we deem them worthy or we agree with their theology or their worldview or even their opinions of us. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Even the ones who cut us off in traffic were called to love with unconditional love, the kind of love that Jesus loved us with when he died on the cross for us. And so I want to want us to pray a prayer of confession and preparation uh, for communion today. So pray this prayer with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now I invite you just to, for a moment of silence to, to pray that prayer of what you need forgiven for. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.